that's it right there that's what we're making today flat delicious hello welcome back to my kitchen hey today i'm going to be making cornbread cornbread is delicious cornbread is a favorite of the south and certainly a favorite in texas and i have the makings of a really delicious cornbread recipe now this is a recipe I put together for myself many years ago and it is one I still love to use. It gives you a great corn flavor, a little more of a structured bread-like texture, it's a really good texture, great flavor. And I'm gonna be putting some jalapeno in mine. You can leave the jalapeno out or put it in yours either way. It's delicious if it's done right. And I wanna show you how to prepare those jalapenos and not have any of the heat of the jalapeno in your cornbread. It's a really neat thing to do, so it's not that hard. Got some great ingredients here, but before we get into that and get started on it, let me ask you to please, at some point, take a look in my description box. You're gonna see some links there links to my website, and that's satrotter.com. That's where you're gonna get my recipes, you're gonna get aprons and shirts, and also other products that I sell, as well as my services. Check that out, it's a really cool thing. And please, subscribe if you haven't done so. Click the like button if you enjoy this video. And let's get busy making some cornbread. Come on over. So the ingredients I'm gonna be using today, eggs, milk, cornmeal, flour, baking powder, sugar, salt, and some jalapeno. The jalapenos, I'm gonna fine dice these. Okay, I'm getting ready to cut these up and I want to recommend a couple of things. Uh, pardon my alarm going off. Uh, what I want to recommend is these gloves, uh, what I'm putting on. You might be thinking, well, goodness, you know, you can just wash your hands. Well, yes, you can. However, when it comes to working with chili peppers, hot peppers like this, these things um, have an oil in them called capsaicin, and that oil, when it gets on your skin, can burn you, okay? And um, it can burn the face and other sensitive parts of the body that it really doesn't need to be on. Uh, I've never really had it burn my hands, although I've had other people tell me that they've been through that. And uh, so what I wanted to mention to you is if you use a glove, you don't have to worry about getting it on your skin. You don't have to worry about washing it off. And it really, it makes working with jalapenos just a lot easier. So do yourself a favor, get some gloves. Um, the next thing is, when it comes to jalapenos that are pickled, guys, those things are like hot all the way through. And that's because the capsaicin, that hot oil that's in these things, washes from the core right here off into the green part, this stuff here that we want to use. So if we simply take this and remove this core and use fresh chilies like this, then we don't have to worry about getting any of that hot capsaicin in our food. All right, now, some people don't mind it. Some people love it. Some folks love the seeds. And folks, if you do, go ahead and put those in yours. That's fine. I'm not gonna knock that. But I like a, just a nice, green, super fine, fi, uh, super fine diced jalapeno. And uh, so what I'm looking for is just some really tiny squares that will stand out beautifully in those muffins. Now, if you'll notice I'm using a spoon, simply scraping those cores out. It's not hard, uh, so just do the same thing. You can cut these out with a knife, but frankly, I've tried both methods and I really think this one's easier. Um, so I recommend, recommend it to you as well. Now, when I want to be cutting jalapenos like this, Something I want to mention, if you've got a really sharp knife, you can cut through the skin fairly easy with a really sharp knife, but not everybody has really sharp knives. So if you don't, I want to recommend you start from the inside and you'll find that it cuts a lot easier this way, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm making just some little thin matchsticks here, okay? These are only mm, maybe a total of um, an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch wide. They're really small. Okay, 
Now, same way that I sliced these nice and thin, I'm just going to be making very short cross cuts to get a beautiful small dice. Now, for this dish, it's just sort of up to you. You're gonna want anywhere from a half of a cup to one full cup of fine diced jalapeno like this. Now, I've got somewhere around, I'm guessing, maybe three quarters of a cup right there. All right, so looking really good. We can get busy making this. Let's go ahead and start putting together our dry ingredients. Some cornmeal and flour. So got some sugar here, our salt. Now, if you ever notice me tapping a, a jar like that, it's just to break loose what's in there. Sometimes, sometimes things stick a little bit, you know. That one didn't, but sometimes they do. This is a very easy do. We just want to mix together those dry ingredients. There we go. Now I'm starting to get a uniform consistency there. There we go. Looks nice, doesn't it? Next thing, we need to get our liquid ingredients mixed together. I've got my two eggs here and I've got my milk. Go ahead and break my yolks. Pardon my bowl singing so much. They do that. we go. Now we have both wet and dry ingredients ready and my jalapenos all diced up and ready to go. So let's get this mixed up. Once it's mixed up, we're going to allow the whole thing to rest for a little bit. Okay. for those fingers. I was real careful earlier not to get any capsaicin on my hands. And that's so important because you know, you scratch under your eye or something an hour later, next thing you know, your, your eyes are watering, your face is burning and you're wishing you hadn't done that. <laughs> and so that's why I really recommend those gloves. Now look at this. This looks great, doesn't it? But we have a, a situation here. That cornmeal has just been sitting there dry and hasn't been doing nothing, and it is still somewhat on the dry side. I need my cornmeal to absorb some of this liquid. It's gonna make it a much better quality if I do that, all right? So I need to give this some rest time. All righty, let's let it rest. Now we're going to be using some muffin cups in order to make our corn muffins here. Now, muffin cups, fine. If you want to do without the liners, just spray these with a little cooking spray, hit them with a bit of flour, and you know, it's called greasing and flouring, and uh, then throw out any excess flour, okay? You don't want any excess in there, just a light dusting of it. Um, that will release those muffins nice and pretty. However, if you like also doing these liners, and I think these things are great, then do a muffin liner. They make paper ones like this, and they're all right. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you've never tried the foil liners, you've been missing out. These things are absolutely fantastic. They release very clean. They leave a very good looking muffin in most cases. And uh, you end up with something that uh, is not only aesthetically pleasing, but uh, is much easier to work with. All right, so you might wanna give the foil ones a try. And uh, I should mention, these foil ones come with paper in between, so it's kinda like getting 
double muffin cups, <laughs> all right? So give it a shot, you're gonna like those. In a little bit, we're gonna be filling these things up and uh, getting them in the oven. But for the moment, we gotta finish resting that. And it's just a matter of being patient, nothing more. All right, I have given this 20 minutes of rest time and it's looking fine. If you'll notice, it's kind of bubbled up a little bit on the inside there. Now, what I want to do is to put a couple ounces of this into each one of these. And I'm going to use this. This is a two ounce ladle. Also, something that's very handy if you want to do portioned measurements. These right here, this is called a disher. They're very handy. This one's a one and a half ounce. It's the largest one I have. So I'm going to use this, which is a two ounce ladle. I'm just going to pull up some of this and without making too much of a mess, try to fill each one of these cups with roughly, roughly two ounces. So if you'll notice here, what I've got going on, and if you get a little bit of this on the outside of the muffin cup or you get some on the pan, hey, don't let it spoil your day, okay? Don't lose any sleep over it. It's not going to make any significant difference to anything in life, all right? Oop, looks like I grabbed a hold of that one, didn't I? Something I do want to mention while you're getting this done, go ahead and get that oven preheated. You're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. All righty, it's time for these to hit the oven. All right, 15 to 20 minutes on average for those muffins. So I'm gonna start with 15, get my timer up and running there. And in a little bit, I'm gonna take a look at them. And if they're not properly brown on top, then I'm gonna give them a little bit more time. I want them to be a beautiful golden color on top but also I wanna be able to insert a toothpick and that toothpick come out clean. Same way you do with a cake. That's the best way to check these things. So have a toothpick handy, check it at 15 minutes and then move on from there. So the quantity of all of the ingredients that we have used today starts over here. One cup of flour, one cup of cornmeal, one cup of milk, two eggs, enough jalapeno when it's diced you have anywhere from a half a cup to a cup of diced jalapeno four teaspoons of baking powder a quarter of a cup of sugar and a half a teaspoon of salt and that equals the delicious that i'm about to show you now let's take a look at these gorgeous corn muffins i'm going to get these out of the oven Looking beautiful. Absolutely. Okay, so what we want to do is check these to make sure they're finished. I'm just going to poke this right into the middle of one. It was nice and crusty on top. Let's pull this out. Oh, good and clean. These are cooked all the way through. I just need to let them cool a little bit and then I'll remove them from the container. These that have got there we go, got stuck a little bit. Might take a little bit of work, but I think I can get them. There we go. All right, let's take a look at one of these. I'm gonna pull him out of there. Ooh, that is hot, 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 hot. Okay, now this might stick a little bit because they are so very hot, but I wanted to look inside of one. And boy, I just don't wanna wait, let me tell you. So yeah, they're sticking more than they would if I let them cool a little. However, that gives me the chance now. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous muffin, folks. Look at the structure on the inside of that bread. It is beautiful, got a great texture. It has great flavor. I already know because I love these things. I enjoy them. 
as often as I can. Mm, absolutely good. Now, just gotta let them cool a little bit, and then they're ready to enjoy. Well, I've got them all out of the pans and stacked up here, and I have this one that I just finished cutting open right in front of you folks. I'm gonna put a little butter on it. Love butter on my muffin. Mmm, <laughs> sweet. I love corn muffins for their sweetness, that smooth corn flavor when it's done right. This is incredible. And then the jalapeno. Jalapenos turn sweet when they're cooked right, okay? So try this. And remember, it works with fresh jalapeno. Don't use pickled. Mm hmm Folks, if you would, please subscribe. Click the like button. If you haven't done so already, drop a comment right down below here. Click on my website and check out what I have there. And thank you very much for watching this. And you folks have a good day, all right? Mm -hmm. That's good.